You want your next amp to power your headphones beautifully and at any volume. From the value-oriented Atom to the top spec Element 3, chances are you'll have more power than you'll ever need. But why is this? And how can you determine the power needs of your headphones? Let's dive in. First, we need to understand that power is volume. What volume you want to listen at determines what power you need. So what is enough volume? We would define enough volume as a range. From the loudest volume any listener would want to listen to any music for any period of time, to the lower volume a listener would enjoy when listening passively, say at work. You can translate this range into decibels. From 115 dB on the extreme end, the equivalent of standing next to the speakers at a rock concert, to 70 dB on the low end, about the level you'd expect to hear background music at your local Starbucks. Keep in mind that hearing damage is a very real possibility when listening to any music for sustained periods over 85 decibels. So when we say extreme, we mean it. At 115 dB, just a minute of exposure can cause irreversible hearing damage. Now that we understand a little bit more about volume, we can use something called an SPL chart to measure the specific power needs of any headphone, as long as we know its sensitivity. You can typically find this number measured in decibels per milliwatt in the specifications for your headphone. Here we have an SPL chart with three volumes, extreme, high, and low. Power needs are charted on the vertical y-axis, headphone sensitivity on the x-axis. For comparison, we'll chart three reference headphone models that represent broader categories. From the left, we'll chart an ultra-efficient IEM, like the 64 Audio A18T, to a moderately power-intensive Sennheiser HD600 series, to perhaps the world's most power-hungry headphone, the Hi-Fi Man HD6. Keep in mind the vast majority of headphones are more efficient, not less, than the Sennheiser. Using each headphone's impedance measured in ohms, we can see the power needs relative to the amp's continuous power rating. Ohms are a measure of electrical resistance, so an amp's power output will change up or down depending on the impedance. In this chart, we use Atom as the reference amp. For demonstration purposes, we've charted power usage at the extreme threshold of 115 dB SPL. As you can see from the sharply sloped red line, it's only at this volume, and only when discussing extraordinarily power-intensive headphones, that the issue of power is even a consideration. We would never recommend you listen to music at this volume for any period of time. First is the 64 Audio IEM. Designed to fit in your ear, we'd expect IEMs and their tiny drivers to sip power. In this case, the IEM uses just 1% of Atom's available limit to reach an extreme volume level. Second is the Sennheiser HD600, one of the most popular lines in the industry. Power needs are greater than the IEM at 51 milliwatts to reach 115 dB, yet still only 20% of Atom's capability. Third is the Hi-Fi Man, the hungriest of the bunch by far. This unique headphone at an extreme volume demands a whopping 1.4 watts of power. In this case, that's 93% of Atom's max, still within a comfortable operating range. As you can see, power simply isn't an issue. To use a real-world example, I regularly listen to a pair of Hi-Fi Man Sundaras at work. At a sensitivity of 94, these are relatively inefficient. That said, I rarely crest to a clock on the volume dial of my Atom. And that's on the amp's low gain setting. For us, there's this too much nonsensical, unscientific debate on this issue. A great metaphor is like the brightness on your phone. You want the phone bright enough so you can enjoy it in a wide range of lighting conditions, but you don't need it so bright that it's like staring into the sun. As enthusiasts, we want to enjoy our music to the fullest and appreciate the equipment that allows us to do so. That should be our focus, not chasing a spec sheet that has no appreciable benefit to our actual listening experience. So at this point, it's fair to ask yourself, do you need a headphone amp at all? especially if you have a pair of efficient headphones. With companies like Apple introducing high impedance headphone jacks, is there really a need for a dedicated headphone amp? It may surprise you to hear this, but it's actually the lower volumes where Atom and Element make the greatest impression. 
If you regularly listen to music to relax and focus, you will be blown away by the ultra low noise floor of Atom and Element. There's just a silky black isolation of sound at lower volumes that's impossible to describe. We'll be producing a video in the future specifically on noise floor as part of this series. And if you'd like a deeper technical dive into power and SBL, we've included the link to a post in the description below that we think you might find interesting. Until next time, thanks for watching.